Hey, it's Tony Bruski, and this is our Week in Review. Over the weekend, taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations and stories that we've covered for you of the last week. Brand new episodes back Monday morning, bright and early, 5 a.m. here on the podcast. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Jesse Hildebrandt, who's uh, the niece of Jody, was on Nightline recently. And she gave her accounts of what life was like while she was under the care of her aunt, Jody Hildebrandt, saying that she would lock me up in a room and make me write out my sins on paper. And that she also made her sleep outside in the snow duct taping her, not allowed to speak to anyone. This is something that happened years ago. This is not just a recent account from the children of Ruby Frankie. This has been Jody's MO for quite some time. Uh, How does this exist, I guess, is the question with no oversight and that people were screaming, look, Jody's doing this. This is not okay. This is what I went through. And yet she was able to practice and practice until a kid showed up on the neighbor's doorstep emaciated. Yeah, it really, you know, we could come up with some fancy words for it. But (laughs) the one that seems most apt to me is just simply crazy. The lady is crazy Mm -hmm. and abusive and inappropriate. And it makes one wonder about the licensing board in the state of Utah. Yeah. How did she get away with this stuff as long as she did? This is just, it makes no sense. And running a counseling agency of all things, you know, Mm -hmm. how horrifying. Uh, How much do you think it was that... uh, because LDS was behind them for so long. And even when LDS stopped officially recommending Jody, there were still recommendations coming uh, from others uh, simply because it was connected to a religion. I'm not trying to pick on LDS or specifically, I'm just saying anything like this where you have a counseling service that is somewhat intermingled with a religions by nature for many people who haven't had a horrible experience in them, although many have, it's a, it should be a positive thing. It should be a mm-hmm. place of safety. And it is for many. Mm-hmm. Is that how these sort of things can be overlooked? Because once an accusation goes out there against somebody within that organization that maybe didn't happen to them personally, it's maybe easier to try and get behind the organization you love and cherish and you think is great rather than take a more introspective look at the possible cracks that are in it. Yeah, I think having the affirmation of the Mormon faith gave her power and it allowed her to get away with things that she never would have gotten away with in a more typical counseling agency setting. But apparently her take on sexuality which is very unusual, we can say, Mm -hmm. um, punitive, that fit with what people heard at church. And it just gave her license to get crazier and crazier over time. Yeah, it just seemed to keep getting deeper and deeper. Kevin Frankie is an interesting character. And I, with anyone we, we talk about, you try and put yourself in their shoes and try and go, okay, how did you interact here? What was going on? Why did you take the actions or not take the actions that you did? It's hard, quite frankly, looking at Kevin Frankie, because I can't figure out what type of shoe he's wearing to try and identify any of it, because his actions seem very bizarre, saying that he hasn't had much contact with Ruby in a year, maybe four or five times. I find that bizarre because those are his children that are there as well. And to not have any interaction with your own kids seems weird. It's passive. That's the thing that jumps out at me. It's like these women were running the show and dictating everything to him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the fact that you go along with this, it's the passivity is the really strange part. The anger that he also displayed when his oldest daughter came to his residence and she had permission to do so to get some of her belongings. They did have, I believe it was an officer or it was a social worker. Somebody was there to help because Kevin wasn't too open to her coming in and taking items out of the home. I find that also kind of odd that your 20 year old daughter is just trying to get her stuff. And then you're literally, he said that she burglarized the home uh, because she also did take Some key pieces, I think, that are going to be evidence here, some of his diaries and writings Mm. about God knows what, but she seemed to know where to go to get the pieces that she may need to shine light on the parenting that she had experienced. 
Yeah. And as much as he will sort of take this position now, his attorney has taken the position that he is a victim also. This Mm -hmm. is an educated professional man, you know, and I do personally, when I look at this, yes, Ruby is not right. Jody is not right. And I don't think Kevin is quite right either. There's something wrong here. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.